Welcome to St Mary's Chalcombe. Here up in the valley and just below St Stephen's on Lansdowne in Bath in the southwest of England. You are very welcome to this our online service, an informal version of our services that we offer here in St Mary's Chalcombe and up the hill at St Stephen's Lansdowne. You'd be welcome at those in person, but we know that whether it's due to the pandemic, whether it's due to accessibility, or whether it's due to a whole host of other reasons, we appreciate that it is through the digital medium that many of you need and like to worship. And so that is what we will do today. My name is Andrew Avramenko. I'm the curate and priest for these two churches and for what beyond. And this is a national day of prayer for Ukraine. Something that, like many, we are praying daily for, constantly for. And in case you don't know, I'm the son of a Ukrainian refugee. My grandparents and my father um, escaped from the concentration camp in Ukraine and uh, survived the Holodomor. Well, my grandparents did. My dad was born in the early 40s. And we'll be speaking of the Holodomor uh, later during the sermon. But let us open with this service formally with a prayer. The prayer for today. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have two readings today. The first is a psalm, a psalm that is typically read during Lent, and we'll be talking about that also later. It's Psalm 126. It's a harvest of joy one of the Song of Ascents. It reads, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with joy shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And our Gospel reading for today. A story you may well know. A story about Mary anointing Jesus. And it's worth perhaps pointing out before we read it that we're not totally sure which Mary this is. There are at least seven Marys in the New, in the New Testament. This Mary could be Mary Magdalene. Um, certainly gives strong indication to that in Luke's Gospel. Although she's not named there. Neither is she named in Matthew and Mark's Gospel. But they locate uh, this story, this reading in Bethany. And John's Gospel, which we will read it from, that also locates it in Bethany and names the Mary as the sister of Martha, which is also logical. 
because Lazarus, Mary and Martha's brother, died and was resurrected at Bethany. And Lazarus' resurrection was but a temporary defeat that foretold the permanent victory and peace over death that Jesus won. Perhaps it's a comment on the patriarchal society that was and indeed still is to a good extent. But whoever the lady is, whichever Mary she is, we do have in this reading an extravagant incident of poignant yet hopeful beauty. So let's read it now. It's from John chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial, but you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, in our readings, so I just find where we are, forgive me. And take a sip of my drink. Coloured like the skies of the Ukrainian flag. And that sits behind me. Psalm 126 is a psalm that is often read aloud during Lent, as I said, because it looks back in order to look forward with hope, and it does so from the present. It's where we live, the present, and it's where Mary Magdalene lived. It wasn't where Judas and the other disciples were living in our reading. Now it might appear that Judas was living in the present because he was present enough to see the extravagant thing that Mary Magdalene did. But he saw what she did as a wasteful act that hindered the ability to help people in the future. Instead of giving hope, he saw it as removing hope. We might find ourselves agreeing with Judas, and there's good reason to do so, but Mary saw differently. She saw hope in the blessings of that moment, the now. She chose to live in the now in that moment, in that hope, in that blessing. And she could do that because she remembered the past. Psalm 126 looks back on the Exodus and the arrival into Israel, to a time when God restored the fortunes of the Israelites. They delighted, naturally so, in leaving behind the oppression, the fear and slavery of Egypt. Acknowledging the pain of the past helped them to focus on the present blessings and to hope for a better future. And so they delighted in having entered the land promised to them by God, a land rich in resources for agriculture, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of sustenance and safety. And such was their delight that they raised their voices in joy. joy. They laughed. They saw and noticed and realised the blessings before them. The contrast between their past time of darkness and their present time of light and delight 
amplified the possibilities. The contrast made them dream. You can imagine them saying, as God did that and this, as God carried us out through and beyond the exodus to here, imagine what he can do and will do for us now. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine the blessings. Imagine how much more we will rejoice and give thanks for. But the contrast did not make them forget. Just as we remember the past of Jesus' life in order to remember and appreciate the, appreciate the eternal future that he shares with us, so did the psalmist remember and remind others of their past. They realised that past pain or something similarly painful could happen again in the future for them and indeed for others. And in realising that possibility, they had compassion for those who would not be rejoicing as they did then. They looked to the future pain of another and praised, prayed for the present joy to be known. There is encouragement in the psalm for us to do likewise. And to know that God and others wish we will know joy if we find ourselves in pain. There is encouragement to be compassionate and to know our compassion. And there is one verse that points us to our compassion, to our hopes and prayers for Ukraine in the present moment, in their present moment, and in their in-between time. Verse 5 of the Psalm 126 says, May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. In trademark Ukrainian humour, in the midst of their pain, some joked, have joked that they were unifying as a country to expel the Russian invaders quickly because they needed to sow the seeds of the, for the growth. They needed to get them out of the way so they could sow the seeds for the growing season that is beginning in that country. It was for a reason that in the times of Stalin and Soviet Union, that Ukraine was known as the breadbasket of Russia. Its vast plains of nutrient-rich arable ground have produced vast quantities of grain. So much so that Ukraine is one of the biggest exporters of grain around the world. The agricultural potential has been turned into a weapon against them and us in the now, as it has and was in the past. In the present, this very week, reports said that Russian military uh, ships are blocking 70 other ships stocked full of Ukrainian grain from leaving the Black Sea. Some have apparently been stopped from entering the Mediterranean by being sunk, although I, I should add that I haven't been able to verify this. And I said this is not, not new to Ukraine. In the past, in the 1930s, Ukrainian grain was seized in order to wipe out their identity and their desire to regain the independence that they had won for a short while in the 1920s. So much was taken from the fields, from the storehouses, from the cupboards and from the very hands of Ukrainians that millions of people died. Given the suppression and destruction of records during and after the genocide. The true number is impossible to know, but estimates range between 4 and 10 million people starving to death, with many seeming to settle for 7 million. This dark and painful time, this weaponizing of food, this purposeful death by starvation is known as the Holomador. The Israelites of King David's time celebrated 
what they had in the now, knowing that they did not have it in the past and might not have it in the future. But it was not the rejoicing of a pessimist. It was rejoicing of a realist and an optimist. Because as I've already said, knowing what God had done for them gave them dreams and visions of a hopeful and joyful time and a joyful future. Acknowledging the pain of the past, whether it be the Holodomor for the Ukrainians or something unique to each one of us, helps us to notice and focus on the present blessings and hope for a better future, even when the present may feel bleak. The Hebrew word for fortune, the fortune that Psalm 126 celebrates being restored, is shevet or shevut, which is translated also as previous condition. Ukrainian farmers know that now sow in tears hope that God will restore their fortunes as God did for the Israelites to restore its previous condition of independence that it regained in 1991. The war has galvanised a nation, but it has unified the nation. It has brought together those who looked and leant towards Russia with those who looked and leant towards the European Union and the West. Indeed, it has knitted together the Ukrainian Orthodox Church that is tied to the Russian uh, Patriarch and, to the Orth and the Orthodox Church of Ukraine that is tied to the rest of the global Orthodox Church. And the war has brought blessings beyond the border of Ukraine. It has so shown that governments around the world and or so, sorry, it has shown to governments around the world how people are revolting against a hostile environment towards refugees and instead offering their homes to those in need. I know many in this church are seeking to do just that. This outpouring of compassion in the present may create some pain in those refugees who needed it in the past or need it now and don't get it. But yet it is a blessing in the present that does give us hope. It is not only a blessing of unity and compassion to rejoice in, but a blessing to pray that is, we pray is replicated here in the United Kingdom. Psalm 126 is a psalm that can encourage us wherever we find ourselves in the now, even in our day. And what it does is replicated in the examine. And one of the best things I can ever recommend someone do is take a lesson from the Jesuits and do the examine. Now, do the examine is not a dance although King David turns it into one to the displeasure of Mikael, nor is it an exam. The exam, ex exam is simply taking a short period of day, often at the end of it before bed, uh, and looking back to reflect on the day that has passed, to notice both the good and the bad, the challenges and the blessings. It doesn't try to hide the difficulties, it acknowledges them, and so does so in order that, the, that they don't keep eating away from us. Eating away at us, sorry. So that they don't undermine the good of the day. So that they don't hide or wipe out the blessings. But it doesn't dwell on the difficulties. Once the difficulties have been acknowledged, it hands them over to God and moves it on to seek the blessings of the day. And here it does dwell. It dwells so that the blessings of the immediate past become the blessings of the present and to carry into the future. And this noticing of blessings around us, even in the darkest of times, is picked up by our Gospel reading today. In the scene uh, described, we see Mary wash Jesus' feet with expensive perfume. Perfume which Judas points out could have been sold for a significant sum that could have helped the poor. On the surface, as I said earlier, his complaint seems perfectly reasonable, even though beneath the surface his motive was apparently to not help the poor but help his own wallet.
in her act. Mary is acknowledging a painful past and giving thanks for the restoration of the condition, the condition before the painful past. The restoration of fortunes that Psalm 126 talks about or the, and the healing and forgiveness that Jesus gives. And in being so, she is in, indicating the almost unmeasurable degree of her thanks. She is indicating her love and respect for Jesus. But she's also pointing to the hope in a difficult future. Matthew and Mark's gospel link this story with Jesus' burial, another time of pain before hope. John's gospel does that too, but it also links it with the Last Supper, to a time when Jesus celebrated his love for his disciples by washing and wiping their feet. And in all four Gospels, including Luke's, the woman's recognition of who Jesus is and her tremendous thankfulness is at the instant's core. She realises that nothing comes remotely close to that given by Jesus. Hope in the now and the eternal, hope that heals past pains, hope that restores fortunes. Now whilst Mary acknowledges the past pains, she points out to future ones too. But with the anointing of Jesus' feet, pointing to both his burial and the Last Supper, we are asked by both Mary and Jesus to notice the blessings in the now and to celebrate them with great thanks, because they will carry us through and beyond the trials we have yet to face. We are not called to hide from the pain, but to remember and acknowledge it. But as Psalm 126 and the examine encourages us to do, we are then encouraged to focus on the blessings and hopes in the past and the present something we do every time we celebrate Holy Communion. We are asked to use those blessings and hopes as fuel for our dreams, to do as the psalmist did and imagine what God will do for us and for them and with us and with them in the future as well as in the now. To know and pray that though we might still sow with tears, and go out weeping, we will reap and come home with shouts of joy. And I pray that all who shed tears come home to joy in the present, but know that they are guaranteed to come home to joy in the eternal through the greatest blessing, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we've come to a time of our intercessionary prayers. We'll include prayers for all of us, prayers for this season, for this Passion Tide. But we'll also pray our prayers for Ukraine on this National Day of Prayer for Ukraine. And I'll put those prayers in the description below with this sermon. So you can read and respond along with them too. Something we're committed to do each service until the war ends. So let us pray. Let us pray with faith and love and in union with Christ. Let us offer our prayer before the throne of grace. Have mercy on your people for whom your son lay down in his life. Bring healing and wholeness to people and nations and have pity on those torn apart by division. 
Strengthen all who are persecuted for your name's sake and deliver them from evil. Look in mercy upon all who suffer and hear those who cry out in pain and desolation. Bring comfort to the dying and gladden their hearts with the vision of your glory. Give rest to the departed and bring them with your saints, with Saint Stephen, Saint Mary, with all your saints, to glory everlasting. Amen. God of all nations, we cry to you for the people of Ukraine. We thank you for their roots, identity and courage in the face of such aggression. We pray for peace to be quickly restored in the land of Ukraine, for war not to extend beyond its borders and for the peace of Western countries for to remain. Kiri Eleison, Lord have mercy. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Christ Jesus, Prince of Peace, we pray for v President Vladimir Zelensky and President Vladimir Putin and both their governments. Thwart evil power, direct hearts to be peaceful and full of mercy. Give wisdom to other governments to know how to help Ukraine and its people and to avoid escalation. Bless the peacemakers. Kiri Eleison, Lord have mercy. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Holy Spirit, we pray for the church in Ukraine. Give our sisters and brothers strength and resilience in this crisis to proclaim the good news of your kingdom. Bind up broken hearts and bring comfort to all who mourn. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Holy God, you make war cease to the ends of the earth. You break bows, shatter spears and burn shields with fire. You are our rock our fortress and our deliverer. Our hope is in you. We pray you save the lives of Ukrainians and Russians and Belarusians and all caught up in this war. Kiri Eleison, Lord have mercy. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have grant us peace. Let us commend the world for which Christ died to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. And the final blessing to send you out on your day. Peace to you from God our Father who hears our cry. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ whose death brings healing. Peace from the Holy Spirit who gives us life and strength. And the blessings of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Comforter be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you and all you love this day and forevermore.
Goodbye.